Hi everyone, it's Kathleen. We are back to continue working on one of the quadrants for our butterfly block. My video shuts off when I receive a phone call because I'm using an iPhone. So I apologize for the my last sudden ended video. And we outlined, this is all of the black I'm going to outline for now, everything on the right hand side the body and the antenna, and just the outside of the top half and those little black circles. That's all that's going to be outlined in black. Now I'm going to continue working. I am going to treat this as a sampler. So I'm going to stitch one of these and I'm gonna leave one blank. I think I'll leave this one blank and I'll stitch this larger one. And the colors that I am using, let's move this over. The main colors of the butterfly are going to be a vibrant honey, a varig and going down to, whenever you have a variegated color, I am going to be using variegated going darker colors. So I have a honey, Variegated, variegated, going darker, coral, variegated coral going darker, aqua, variegated aqua going darker, turquoise and variegated turquoise going darker. And we're gonna shade this in with these threads. And this is going to be the light peach will be the fill-in color for the backdrop, hopefully, if I don't change my mind. So let's move this over, move that over, and let's start stitching. I've threaded up my needles already because it's easier to just pick a needle and go. So I wanna start with the darker color going lighter or let's point to this one. So let's just start. The darkest color is going to be my turquoise color. And I've knotted the back. I'm gonna start this one here. And it's a series of long, short stitches. So I wanna come up right in the corner. See where that is, make sure I'm not hitting a knot. And I'm not in the corner, so let's just go right there. So long and short stitches are just that, and you're using thread to um, fill in an area. I'm starting with about a quarter of an inch length stitches, and working my way. I'm going to do the two outline pieces close to the black first. There's no set rule of how you do this. Long and short is just that, a long stitch and a short stitch, a long stitch and a short stitch. So they vary and blend. So I am going to go in the center now. I'm going to go this way. And you work, usually you work from one side out, like from one corner outwards. So let's go back into that corner. Wow. It's painting with thread. Usually, is it people use a thinner embroidery thread or a one or two strands of uh, embroidery floss. But I like my pearl cotton, and this one happens to be a five, which is very thick which people would probably not use for a 
painted stitch, but I love the color and I only have it in five. I don't have it in eight. Okay. And the way that I'm working, it's like in a V shape, V shape, V shape. Some people work in a hoop, I don't. Cause, because I have to feel my threads where it's going in. Okay, I don't like where that came out. Can I, okay, I'll just work with this one and I'll just add another one in there later. Put it down. I'm not gonna work this whole section in this color. I'm just putting a, a solid color and then in the closest to the body and then I'm working my way outward. Okay, let's go back down here. And I'm coming up at the end of a stitch on this one close to the black. And you want to lay, make sure your fabric is laid flat. That's why people work in a hoop. But again, I said I can't work with, I have to touch my, I only need a small little hoop like this. And I prefer to just hold mine. It's just a matter of preference. So you see how I'm just, sometimes I'm going on the, on the back. Okay, I always come up on the left hand side of the stitch and I go down on the right hand. I don't go from right to left, left to right. It's always in the same rotating stitch because you'll get a, um, a nice even flow, even pull of your fabric. Sometimes you lay the, the thread down. I go back and do this. Coming up right at the end of that last stitch. looks pretty. So do I want to have, since this is bright butterflies, I'm going to have maybe, let's see what half looks like. I was going to say I was going to have, oh, let's go back here, two thirds and one third, but uh, as a ratio of the colors, but I'm just going to continue. I'm going to, it's still not half. And you see how I, it's called stabbing the fabric of going in and out, in and out. I'm not keeping my needle on top of the fabric. Okay, I really like that. I think that looks so good. Let's move this. Sometimes I just can't even feel underneath there. Alrighty. This is going to take a while to fill in. And you always make sure that it lays nice and flat because if you pull, you see how it snags your fabric or crunches it? You want to make sure it lays flat all the time. And continue. They call this painting because it's a short and a long, short and a long. Sometimes I lay my thread down. This one's going to be a real long because this is, well, not real long. Let's just go like this. And and you always try to stagger the stitches.
go back here. This will almost look like a stained glass window, the way that the black is outlining. Okay, I like that length. I'm gonna go back in here. Let's see where this lays, very nice. Let's lay it there. So I'm working downwards now, and I am, so that's probably two, th let's say three quarters of the bright, and it'll be one quarter of the dark. So let's just go a little stitch here. It tends to come out quick easily because I choose a needle, a number one milliner's needle, because it's easier for my hands to hold. My thumb lets go sometimes, and it's hard to, well, it lets go. Okay, so where did I finish off? Right there. Let's go back in here. In here your painting with thread will look different if you use a thicker thread than it would if you oh how long if you use a thinner thread yes I want to go a little bit longer one and then we're gonna switch we're gonna still work in this little shape and we're gonna go with the darker color so let's oh that's beautiful let's lay it down about there so I like the way that looks and let's tie this off I make one little knot and I'm going to carry it under some stitches because I I know I'm gonna be stitching here and I just want it out of the way. And that needle is finished. So does it look like painted glass? So far it does, stained glass. Let's get our darker color. Okay, I have some. Oh, I've got a needle. Oh. I don't have those threaded. Okay, let's just quickly get my variegated going. And we're gonna finish filling this one in. Okay, let's, and I did tie a knot at the end of that, and let's just bring it I'm bringing it one through the black one through the turquoise and very lightly so it doesn't pull through now I can start so I'm going to start on the outside here Make sure that I didn't pull it through. I didn't, and now let's color it in with this other thread. This one, and I'm just gonna work my way on the out. Now let's go back here. 
No, I'm changing my mind. Let's work on the outside first, closest to the black. There's no set rule. You can do whatever you want. I'm gonna, I divided that line in half right here, that black line. So I'm going to fill in two, but I have to wait for the next one. Uh, let's go this center one. Always left to right. Left to right. And let's go on the outside again. If I find that there's not too much variation in color, the next blue one I'll... Oh, I might not have a next blue one. I have four different ones. One, well, we'll see. And my plan is to have each of these a different color. So we don't see too much variation in color here. Most variegated threads whether usually the DMC, these are all DMC here, have a, a length of about, I don't know, 12, 18 inches, 12 inches, eight inches, six inches. It's a longer length, 12 inches of it before the next color varies, but the Sue Spargo threads, it's a very shorter color variation. So that's why people buy Sue Spargo threads. So the color variation changes quickly. So that's why you see mainly one color is because it's the one color is for a long period of time before it actually Oops, black is coming through. Why is that? Okay, let's go back here. Paint some more. Can I do one? Ooh, that's a nice dark color. Let's just do one. Oh, I like that. See, I like the darker variations. That's nice. So it's... Uh, maybe I'm just going to go over one because I like the dark. Let's just make this one dark too. Hmm. Might be too thick. Okay, I can't do what I wanted to do. I wanted to put another stitch over top. Can I do it? Can I do it? Let's see. That means I... Oh, I spread my thread. Yes, I'm able to. And can I carry this over? Yes, let's carry it over there. Perfect. Okay, that's all I can do there. And can we see the color bait? Oh, wow, goodness me. Color variation, not that much. Oops, let's just tie this guy off. And let's choose a different color. So that was the turquoise and the variegated. I'm going to bring this over to the side and you saw how I just carried it over and underneath the black portion so I don't lift it up. So that's variegated. Now let's go with another color. Let's go with the aqua. So the aqua, the solid aqua. So there's so many different ways of making knots. That's a quilter's knot. So where do I want this color? For me, color makes a huge, huge, huge difference in how I see things. Oh, I love that. Aqua. I want it on top. Okay, let's start over here in the corner. Okay, I have to bring that 
forgot about my little knot here. So let's let's mm, let's just go under this blue area. Stop. Turn over, and we're gonna do this one blue. I mean aqua. Come on. All right. Again, I'm sticking to the black area first. On the right, go back in the same hole. Go left. Nice. And let's go in this close to the center, but not in the same hole. We're going to go down a bit. I don't want to have it look like V's. I want it to be just irregular lines. I'm just going to go down the center, but long longer than those two and then I'm going going to go to the left go a little bit longer and let's go right on top of that edge one. And lay it down and let's go longer. Okay, I'm not going to go as... Okay, so it looks like I pretty well have lines here, but that's okay. I'm alright with that. Let's go down here. Beautiful. Okay, so I want to go. Uh oh, was that just the stitch that I went down? Oh, I'll go closer to the end then. very pretty like that color and I'm gonna stop here because I want to have a darker bit up there so I have yellow and orange yellow I'm gonna have this bottom one aqua as well so let's oh where do I have to come out Come out here in that quadrant so let's just carry our thread under a couple stitches in the back to just hold it down and then let's just do a little bit of that aqua in here real close to the tip and can you see how it's starting to look like stained glass I think that looks beautiful. Okay, so with your finger, move the thread down a bit so you can stick your needle. Quite close. Okay, let's go up to the corner here. Now, why does that feel so thick? Maybe I have to move my needle towards the white spots. Okay, back to the center. Not that. Let's go right in here. Ouch. 
long needle goes through the fabric. So that's that one. And let's go back. And I'm going to go out this way and I'm going to stop. And let's have a look. Okay, so this part is going to be darker and that's going to be darker. So let's end right here. Yeah, I don't want to stick in another color in there. So let's tie off and take that through and trim it off. So we need a... I have to re-thread this because I don't have another needle available. Let's move that there. And let's go with Oh, come on. This is embroidery floss, so I'm going to be using let's see how many strands it is. Where's my end? Okay, do we want to use six strands? That's really thick. Usually for painted, you want to use less than six. But I think I'm going to stick with this because it is a similar thickness to what I have. Let's do this one. It's darker on this end, and I want to start with a darker color. So let's just tie a knot at the end. Take this end. Let's knot straight. Doesn't that look like stained glass? I think it's very pretty. Painting with thread. And again, it does. There's no set rule for how many strands of this embroidery floss you use. Okay, let's go into that blue again and anchor it. Oh, geez, did I have a knot? Oh, well, I'm gonna have to leave it. I have a big blurb on the end there. Let's go and work on this bottom one. So let's stick our dark thread starting where this guy left off at the right at the end and I'm gonna go about three quarters of the way down and then I'm gonna go in here halfway it will look your shading will look different if you use thinner threads like one thread some people are really that are really into this shading use one color of thread and or one sorry one strand of thread and carry it Oh, I'm sorry, when they're stitching, one strand of thread when they're stitching. This is six. This is not my favorite way of crochet, of um, embroidering. This painted stitch is something that you either love to do or you don't love to do. And this one, for a technique, I'm showing it. It's not something that I usually do in my own personal crocheting. I said, why do I say crocheting? My own personal stitching. I like other fancy embroidery stitches. This is like a satin stitch. I don't tend to do satin stitches. Oh, look, how come I got a, a black line in there? Let's turn it over. Why do I have a black line here? My eyes, can, is that the end of a thread? It is, look at that. Okay, black on, 
well, hard to say. And let's go here. No, let's move it in between here. Okay, some more block thread came through here. Where, what is here? Sometimes these threads pull through. Okay, I, at the moment I can't see where that block is coming through, so it's going to be there. Okay, so that side is done. I have to go up here. Instead of, okay, I'm just going to be, it's a short distance. I'll save thread if I just move my thread across. And it's holding, these other threads are holding down this thread. Now I can just go somewhere in here and let's start so let's go from the bottom and let's take a nice long bite and go really close to the last stitch of aqua I want to go longer. And that stitch is always left to right. A little bit longer. And right close to the black. Uh-oh, why are you coming out? Well, because I had that lump. Remember I told you I had a little loose bit? Crap. Criminy. Okay. And, oops. Oh, lordy. Okay. Oh, that looks pretty. Look at the color variations. Okay, so let's... Can, whoops, can we pull this? Let's go back in here, hook this around. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm hooking this around and I'm pulling it. That way the thread stays straight in the back and it doesn't come out loose again. And let's go to the bottom. See, we all have mistakes and some of this, that's how we correct to fix or modify our mistake. About halfway. You see what I mean? It, my needles are so long, but I need the length to hang on to. And there. Let's go in here, right close to where we stopped. And I'm going to go right in between, so they have two more stitches. Right in the center, along that edge, because then I'll have a stitch on the top and then a stitch on the bottom. And one last stitch. Look at how, look at the colors. You see how they, they would, these look more rustic because the, there's so many threads, there's six strands. It would look more fine and petite if you'd use, use a single thread. But I can't be bothered to sit here with, with one strand of thread. Life's too short, so I just, I just use six. So if I'm just coloring that top, I'm going to leave these 
well, maybe blank. Let's continue with this. So if I finished with my turquoise and my green, let's knot this end and carry it, carry it across somewhere. Cut that off. Okay, so we're finished with the green and the the, the aquas. So I'm gonna get aqua, aqua. What is this? Green or aqua? I mean, solid. Uh, finished with this. Finished with that. So I have yellow and coral honey and coral so where do i want my coral so let's go with we have coral and we have yellow maybe one coral then all three of these yellow let's see what that is going to be one yellow yellow and yellow or do we want yellow does you like I say color makes a big difference so just try out how you like it I think I'm just going to use the one of the coral. So let's start with this color. And I have a knot on the end, and it's going to be in here. And again. Let's bring this in here. And... Don't like I have a little white space so I gotta move down. There we are. So I have a solid coral and I have this pinky variegated. So let's just go about one third of the way with this. And this seems very narrow. Why? Because I'm working with an eight now rather than a five. What a difference a size makes. Okay, this is really, you can see the thickness of the thread compared to six strands, a size five, that's an eight, and this is a five again. Five is thicker. So we're going to do close to the V, I'm sorry, close to the black. In the center so I make a V and then I go in the center and a longer piece in the center I'm just gonna do two more stitches of this coral color one on the left Go close to the center again, longer, and the next one will be shorter. Go in between here again. Make sure you don't stab the threads, you want to go in between the threads. It's really light, isn't it? Okay, let's go here. Do I want to go? I'm going to go on the outside just a little bit more.
remember color yeah, color is everything makes a big difference okay I'm gonna no I'm gonna do one more see I changed my mind it's just how it looks to your eye okay now close to that center a little bit long and I now I'm gonna call it quits Let's have a look. You see how that's painted? Very pretty. And not. And just out of the way. And cut. Now I need to fill up another needle with this and I'm going to use the same oh I'm going to use this piece six strands okay this is a real dark color oh this one has a knot on I'll use the knotted end I like this color shades of light coral dark coral and pinks in places okay let's shade in so stained glass or painting with thread okay let's continue with this shade oh i want to come out here at the bottom so let's just bring it across this way now let's see a little bit further down and remember, don't split the thread. Just come up close beside it. And this is going to be beautiful. Oh, la la. Look at that. Okay, so. Went a little bit more left in between the two threads. Went short. I'm going to go longer. I like a longer stitch when doing when painting like this because the shorter stitch looks like a running stitch to me. But it's just my eyes. Okay, let's go a little. Oh, la la. Look at the blend of colors. How gorgeous is that? Wow. Oh my gosh. Look at how pretty that is. Go to the end of this. So find colors of thread that look nice to your eye. Wow. Start with a solid and then go with a variegated. Not the rule, that's just what I'm doing with mine. And there is no rule, it's what, what you like. And that's just what I like is a solid and some variegated. And we gotta go right back. Oh, let's go this way. And let's go this close to the black. And let's go underneath. Ouch. Okay, let's lay it down here because it looks like I'm going to have to do another strand in there. Gosh, this looks pretty. It does look like a stained glass window, doesn't it? Okay. And, oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. A little bit shorter here. end, I mean on the outside, and nice long stitch, this one, how oh, beautiful,
Okay, I don't like the way this looks, so I'm going to add another thread on top here. So where do I want to stick it down? I want to hide that. So I'm going to stick it down in that same hole, and I'm going to try to manipulate that thread with my finger. Oh, I love that. Okay, now let's continue this. I got a hole there. So I'm going to do another one. So let's just go close. And let's go back because I don't want to see any. Let's go. No, if I spread that thread here. I'll just try this strand first. Sometimes you just got to paint and then look back. So let's see what that is. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay, let's go back here. Oh, let's do the outside. No, let's go back here. Change my mind. And you can change your mind because it's your work. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Maybe one more stitch. Again, your, it will look different if you have different if you have a wool thread with a little bit of fibers. Look at how beautiful that is. The colors just gorgeous. Now, I'm not sure if I want these two are definitely going to be yellow. I'm going to do those yellow ones first because I might do this one, the coral. So I'm going to leave that for now. Undo the two yellow ones. Bring this thread and snip it off. So let's see how the yellow looks. I'm gonna do the yellow, two yellows on the top too, and then we're gonna see what we're, what color we're gonna put in here. So yellow starting with a solid. Bringing it through the back. And let's see where this goes. We want to go in the corner. It's not quite in the corner, so let's go here. And we make a little V shape, one on the left. And one on the right. Okay, one on the left, one on the right, and then one in the center, and that's all I'm going to do with the solid. I'm going to go use my variegated, I think, because this is a small space. And in the center, and then I'm going to... Nice. Okay, I'm going to go over here. So let's... Just carry your thread through. Uh oh, shock here, some someone. He must be on the dining table. Little squirtamaroo dog. Little papillon jumps on the table. Okay, there we are. And three little stitches again. Let's go right. Left. Ouch. And down in the center. And okay. 
let's finish those off. I'm going to use a variegated thread now. Carry that across. And use this yellow variegated scissors. You see how it looks like stained glass? Mm. I love that look. And this is variegated. And the variegated, huh, this pretty well looks like one color, doesn't it? I can see a little bit variegation lighter, and the rest is that canary color. Oh, well, I'll just use it. This is a long variegation, maybe 18 inches. So let's continue with these yellow ones and, oh shoot. Let's start with the, let's go in at the green. And let's continue. Okay, these six strands of embroidery floss are probably going to be thicker than my point eight, I'm sorry, not point eight, eight, number eight of the um, pearl cotton. Okay, I can see a thread coming out here. I don't want green coming out, but I have green. Okay, I got that out. on my finger. Okay, let's go with one long stitch, another, oh, let's go. Oh, I don't want to start in there. So I'm just about going over top of well, not just about, I am going over top of that other thread. Because look at how thin it is compared to that one. And I am going over top. Oh, la la, that looks really pretty. And I want to go one more. Why does that look like such a big gap? Because it is a big gap. Let's just return and go out of here. I'm going down the same hole. Okay, to correct that. So, maybe I'm going to leave that. Do I want to leave it or do I want to add another stitch? I'm going to leave it because I'm going to just do three there. So, let's... Leave that one there and let's continue down. And come down to here. Let's go with. Is it doing that? We are stitching up here. Nice. And the second one. Make sure you don't catch your thread or divide your thread. Unless you're aiming for that. I'm not. and a third one. And that 
one's done. Ooh la la, look at the painting. This is linen, so it's all crunched up, but I will be able to iron it. Doesn't that look pretty? Stained glass painting. So let's see. I think I want to go back and put that coral color down there. But before I do, I'm going to go a yellow in here and this little dot yellow in the center and I'll for sure here. So I'm going to go, since I have my thread, whoa, just going to carry my thread across, turn it over and in this area here, it might be too small. want to do a chain in here but is it going to be too small okay here I'm going to try a chain in the center move my thread in an arc go down the exact same hole and my needle can I go up okay I can I'm making a detached chain on the inside but if it's too too big yeah I want to go down the same way this might be too much and not outlining it. I might have to just do a colonial knot in there. Let's undo this thread. I'm changing stitches. I'm just going to do a small colonial knot in there. Oh, come on. Oh, wow. Okay, so there we are. I'm going to do a small colonial knot in there because it is just too small of an area. And I'm using six strands of embroidery floss. So see, you can change your mind at any time. So this is a very small circle. So it looks like this one and these three will have colonial knots inside. So to do a colonial knot, you hold your thread, you Hit the thread, nope, make a loop. I did it wrong, see I haven't done one in a long time. Make a loop, hit the thread, you have a loop. Hit the thread and go around the, ne the needle and put it down and you're going to tighten it up. such as that's a large knot in a little area but it does look cute so I'm going to be doing colonial knots in these small so that's one two three four five six seven eight oh and all these two if I do dots down there so do I want to do well I, I'm not sure which color I want to do more of in here yellow or coral so I want to do my coral one down there that will decide what my stitch is. So I'm going to finish this off. I'm going to do a knot and I'm going to just bring it back. And cut that off. That's my variegated. So let's do this one here with the solid Solid coral. One, two, three, squeeze and pull. So let's go in on the green to anchor it. Let's go this way. Oh, 
And I'm only going to do a small amount of this coral on the bottom, this solid color. So let's go bottom. bottom, I mean close to the black line, come out again, bottom and hold that thread, because you saw when I was piercing my, there we go, let's go a longer one in the center, and holding your thread behind, because I know I'm going to come up in the same spot, and shorter. Beautiful. I want to have more of that brighter color. So let's tie off. And cut. Now we need some more of that bright floss this mixed variegated coral. Uh-oh. What do I have here? What is happening? Oh, I might as well redo it because there's something wrong here. And that's why I'm not fond of embroidery floss. You're working with, you have to make sure all these six or three or whatever you're working with are always in your needle. This lower down hole and looks like there's an angle so let's just go to this one before it veers up let's go to the end of this one and let's make a nice long one let's go to the bottom here I'm going to go back to the end again because I want to have a couple more stitches in there, one or two and maybe this last one, we'll see might need another one yes, I do Okay, I don't want to separate that, and I seem to be separating it, because I can't see. Okay, let's go here. And you see how I lay the thread down? Where do I want it to go? Right there. And that's it. Very pretty. Let's tie that off. Or make a knot before I tie off. I mean, cut off. Let's have a look at our good press with the iron will help. Okay, so we have a coral in the top. I want to put coral in the top, yellow. two corals or two yellows in here? Let's do a coral. Okay, a 
colonial knot, make a loop, hit the thread, touch, and around the needle. Pull it tight. And pull it through. Nice. And we are going to, I want to tie a knot at the back because I want to make sure it's tight and doesn't flop around. Okay, I should be able to get the last little knot. Oh, and that's going to be a little knot. Look at how big that is. Hmm. Okay, well, we're going to do it. loop, needle hit the thread, finger, and around, really close, pull the thread, I probably should have went with that thinner thread to make it smaller, because you can't even see these little black dots, can you? Black circles. Hopefully they'll grow on me. Tie this off and end. And let's get rid of this thread. I have, oh, oh, let's just work the yellow and the yellow. What do I have in here? I have the thinner, thinner and the thinner. So let's just use this thinner, number eight. Okay, now, where are we going to come up? This is a real small little hole. Thinner thread. Whoa, how come I see a needle? Oh, here it is. Okay, so we're going to make a loop. We're doing a colonial knot, making a loop. Needle touches the thread, finger, and around. Go down, stand it up, and make sure that you pull the thread. Look at how much smaller the, the knot is within the thickness of your thread. This is a nice small knot because it's a size 8 thread. This would be equivalent to a number 5 thread, which is thicker, and you get a much bigger knot. So for down here, I want to go with a yellow dot. Uh, where's down here? Let's see if I can carry my thread. Mm, yes, it's a fair distance, but let's make a knot. And let's just... Carry our thread over. And this little circle, we're going to put a small colonial knot in here. So make a loop. Needle, touch the thread, finger, and around the needle. down, push into my wool mat, make sure this thread is snug and pull. Yeah, what a difference the little, little 
knots make compared to the big ones. So I got to do um, orange in there, so or coral. So let's see which coral we want. The brighter one or the lighter one? Variegated or plain? So let's just do this and... Do we want that bright on the top or do we want a light orange? Bright or light orange? I'm going with bright. Uh -oh. Okay, this is Let's get a little length. So this looks, I'll be able to do a one chain stitch in there, I think, because that's what I wanted to do in there. So let's do a chain stitch. Let's get close to that, close to this. So let's, wow, I got a lot of knots there, don't I? Let's just bring it in here. And let's see, yes, I want to start close to the body of the butterfly. Okay, so a, we're just going to do one detached chain stitch. So your thread comes out, you make a loop. Needle goes down in the exact same hole and comes up most of the way. I want to poke my needle down, but I want to make sure it goes really close. It's one, one strand. Oh, I guess I can't do that because, shoot him around. Okay, look, it fills it up, that one little loop. That's gorgeous. Now we take it, hold our loop, and move our thread so we know it goes down there. I'm holding the tip of that chain with my thumb. There. One chain stitch inside an outline stitch and then little knots, so that looks very pretty. I want to put the same little um, detached chain in the top one of there. Okay, so let's tie that in a knot and anchor it and cut. Well, maybe I don't want to go on to the next one. I said I was just going to do this one. Okay, so let's leave that alone. What else? Are we done this? The only thing we have to do now to completely fill it in, now we need a... This is our fill-in color. So let's... It's that light coral. Oh, okay. Well, I do have a piece here. It's knotted. Let's get a needle. One, two, three. And I'm missing a needle. I can't feel anything. I didn't hear it drop. Oh, here it is. Okay. Let's just take, this is the coral. I'll take the dark coral and put this in here. So this is our stained glass piece. And this is our filler. When you have a painted section, everything is usually painted on the inside of that section. So I'm going to start here and just paint a single line across there. And then I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to just outline, I guess, is what I'm going to do. And let's see. Bring this up here. All right. 
So let's start. Right there. I wonder if that sun is bothering you. I can't tell on my camera. And I'm gonna use longer strands. Oh, that's nice. Longer strands for this, for the background. And go beside it. I'm gonna move it a little bit to go in between. And when I pull it, I can pull it tighter so it's flat. And then let's, oh, I don't want it to look like that. Oh, shoot, you see how I got two stitches? I don't like that at all. Okay, I'm gonna take this out. It's two stitches like that. I want it to look like, well, ouch, one line. I have to take it out, it's bothering me. So to take that out, we just do this. Okay, so we thread. If you don't like the way it looks, take it out. Because if it if you have second thoughts, you'll hate it. So let's just make one straight line like that. How am I going to do this? I want the easiest way. And it'll be, I guess, a back stitch going up here. So how big are my stitch lengths? better if we do stab stitches. There we go. Nope, too short. Okay. I don't know if I like that. I'm gonna continue. It's not, I'm not sold on this. I might put black in there, I'm not sure. If I decide I don't like this because it looks like a running stitch, well, do I like it? Do I not like it? I don't know. So I am doing a running stitch, actually. No, back stitch. I said a wrong thing. Back stitch. It's not a running stitch, it's a back stitch. And I'm going really close to the edge of the black. You can see how the light coral is emphasized by the black, but then here on the white, it's really faint. Now let's 
let's see. I don't know if I like it or not. I'm going to continue going around, just outlining the black. And the way I'm deciding my stitch length is that's one length here, so I'm going to go half. And down. Oh, shoot a brew, come on. At the tip. And down. This other section halfway between. My needle's going to fall off. And to the tip. You know, since I'm having this line on this side, maybe it is a, a good thing that it's over here. So let's go half of the design from here to here, half of that is where I'm going to come up. And then right down. The tip. And down. Oh boy, Jacques and Eva must be. Eva, Mila. Seem to always mistakenly call her Ava. And this one. Ouchie. Okay, I think I'm going to like this. I might not fill in the whole thing. I might just leave it like this. See how I feel after, and whoa, these two black lines are too close together. I'm not going to stick my thread in between there. This will be the last stitch here. And I'm going to knot it, and then we're going to have a look. My plan, initial plan was to fill the whole thing in. Don't know, it's gonna have to grow on me. If I just put this coral on here, you wouldn't even see it. This coral line, if I were to like mirror it, which is what I usually do, you wouldn't even see that. So I'm gonna have to use a darker color, whether it's that for the line. It's hard to say what I'm going to do. I want to do one quadrant at a time. So this quadrant, I'm going to say it's done. I'm not going to fill it in right now. I'm going to leave it as is. I might change my mind down the road, but for now I'm going to leave it to see how it plays on me, how, I, how it grows on me. So to finish that off, I'm just going to put a knot in there already. It's not that big. I'll put another knot and then I'll just carry this across and cut. Then we are finished for today. It's an hour and 25 minutes.
So it's a long video, but painting with thread does take a while. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I'll try to give you, I can't, my screen is really dirty on my iPad, on my phone. So I can't tell if it's better or worse by holding it up. So here we go. I'm going to drop my drape. Maybe that will help. It's just turned to be sunny. Oh, that's way better. Look at that. Okay. So does it look like stained glass? I think it does. I think that turned out really pretty. So that's the first painted thread quadrant of my butterfly. Thank you everyone for watching. Bye for now.